How do you deal with a coworker struggling with suicidal intentions? If you are dealing with, okay, there's two things I'm going to say about that. The first time, and it really, every time somebody talks about suicide, unless you are a trained professional in that specific area, I would quickly find somebody who is. Because, you know, even if you are a psychologist or a therapist of some sort, good psychologists and good therapists and good uh, psychiatrists would tell you that there are people specifically trained in the area of suicide prevention. And a good therapist would find that person and refer their patient to them if they thought that that was going on. That is what I would suggest you do immediately. I don't suggest you handle it yourself at all. Uh, <clears throat> if, however, there is, there is like this online tr t fad or trend. Did you know about this, Andrew, where people are like, oh, I, I, uh, what is it? Uh, a game? No, people talk about suicide as if it's a joke. You know, never, it's like, oh, kill me. Like when, when you say to your best friend uh, that you want to... Oh God, I was just, I was just at a couple of different pages where there's a culture of people saying, like, I really, like, what is, what is the, uh, well, right now I think a lot of teenagers take, take suicide as a joke. As a, right? Yeah. As a joke joke. Uh, and there's all these pages on Facebook and, and Instagram where people will get memes about suicide and about how I'd be better off dead and why can't I just die? There was a song that I was in the pharmacy the other day listening to where the the chorus was something about kill myself, kill myself, kill myself, but it was like a pop song. It was so stupid. So in that case, you know, if you hear people glamorizing or somehow uh, making it a joke, you know, in that context, that I would uh, immediately shut down any type of talk like that at work because especially in this day and age when most of us know somebody who has died by suicide. Hey, look, that's, uh, we did it. Whoops. Oh my gosh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me get the mic on. That's, <laughs> that's the last thing we need. But anyway, bottom line is don't do anything. If you, if you believe that somebody is truly uh, hints at suicide, if you have any thought that somebody's hinting or thinking of, su of suicide, find the correct professional immediately to help them. Okay, another question is, how do you keep yourself from getting really mad at your bo boss at work? I don't get mad in front of the boss, but the minute I'm alone, I get very upset when the boss has really bad ideas. Okay, how do you get, how do you keep yourself from getting mad at the boss when the boss has really bad ideas? <sighs> okay, that comes down to, number one, a personal compass. A personal compass, you have three questions that you would ask yourself. Number one, who am I? Number two, why am I here? Number three, what do I want? And if you stop and ask yourself those three questions, you know, who am I? I'm a compassionate person. Why am I here? I'm here to learn lessons and to shine light into the darkness. What do I want? I want financial independence. That's it. Those are the three things. Now, when I think about my boss, what options do I have? You know, I could tell my boss, those ideas stink, but <laughs> why would I do that? Does it help me be a compassionate person? No. Does it help me shine light into the darkness or learn a lesson? Nope. And does it help me reach my goal of financial independence? Could do just the opposite. So instead of getting so worked up about it, why do I care if the boss has, you know, if the boss has bad ideas, someday if I am the boss and I have a bad idea, we might think, well, I'd want people to tell me about it. No, you wouldn't. You know, you, if, that's, if you have come to that point and you're the boss and that's your idea, unless I have said, what do you think? Does anybody have a critique or suggestion that they'd like to give me? I'm all ears. They don't want to hear it. So why do I want to give it to them? What do I care? So that's one process I'll go through. Uh, if it's really bad, like if your ideas are hurting people, you know, you're, you're causing undue suffering, you're, uh, you know, you're not making uh, use of the resources that you have, uh, and that's why you're frustrated and you're like, oh, how could you be so dumb? You know, you could be making such simple decisions a little bit differently and really making a difference in the world, but you're not doing that. In that case, 
there's a there is a there's a four step process that I would go through if you want to disengage. I mean, it's kind of like what's your what is your goal? Do you want to disengage or do you want to actually convince your boss to listen to you and implement some of your ideas? Because if what you want to do is disengage, you, I'm going to summarize it. Number one, you want to disengage physically. You know, go for a walk, do something physical that changes your body chemistry. Number two, you want to disengage mentally. To disengage mentally, you want to go through a simple process where you say, what's his role? What's my role? What are, op what are my options? And what am I going to do about it? You want to disengage then verbally. Uh, and then you want to disengage using a business tool. Uh, so that's the four-step process that I recommend. That said, if what your goal is is to convince your boss to listen to some of your ideas and implement them, then what we need to do is listen to our boss more and really try to understand them instead of get them to understand our ideas. You know, like if what you think is missing in that relationship is your boss doesn't understand, you know, your boss doesn't get what's going on. Remember that it's only what you're not giving that could possibly be missing from that relationship. That is principle number, I think four and of the nine principles. And if you believe that your boss doesn't understand, you know, what's going on, maybe you don't understand what's going on. <laughs> you know, maybe what you need is a little understanding and understand that things aren't always as they appear. And maybe your boss's ideas are the right ideas, or maybe all of this time and energy that you were spending on thinking about this would be better placed someplace where you can make a big difference and make a change. So try that. <laughs> okay, so we got it was infuriating is equal to infuriating. Yes. Got it. Got the word infuriating boss. Yes. If your boss is infuriating you, I would seriously check what's going on because that is not about your boss. Remember the difficult people just show up at different, you know, they all have they might have different names, but the actors will be the same until you work through whatever issue it is that it's bringing up in you. And so difficult people are no more than master teachers in disguise. And if your boss is truly infuriating you, it's because your boss is bringing up some issue that you have not yet worked through. And if your boss is infuriating you because they're being a jerk, you know, like let's say that your boss is, uh, you know, <laughs> let's say that your boss is somebody... Uh, that you, who would be a horrible person in the movies? Uh, Darth Vader. Darth Vader. That you have. Andrew has such good answers. Uh, if your boss boss is Darth Vader, and so he's really mean. Remember, if it's that you don't like their personality or how they treat people or the way that they behave. We were just doing some lessons from Buddy the dog and Hunter the dead dog. And when you notice behavior that is not acceptable, when you notice behavior that's different, not in the regular pattern, disruptive, something's wrong with that behavior, we tend to focus on the behavior. What we should do is focus on why that behavior is going on to begin with. We know that sounds very simple. We do not do that. You know, it tends to be if your boss is acting in a way that's totally offensive or obnoxious, when it comes right down to it, it's probably going to be because he or she is scared of something. And he or she uh, has trouble expressing that and getting her needs met or his needs met while showing you great love at the same time. If they could do that, they would. Because once we do that with anybody, that's all there is. That's all we want to do. Because we now know, with a capital K, what that means. So if they don't know what that means, you know, be patient with them. They might not have learned the same lessons that you have, and they might not be fully cooked yet. Let them cook in the oven a little bit and go about your business. Go find, <laughs> go spread some joy and love and, and help that person. They say, Lorena Comfort says, maybe when the boss makes a bad decision and it goes wrong, say next time we can try X, Y, Z. You know, Loretta's talking about maybe when the boss makes a bad decision, we can say next time let's try X, Y, Z. I was just dealing with a customer, a, a client, a personal coaching client with this issue where she really wants to help and she wants her opinion to be 
known because she knows what's going on and she has good ideas and she has good uh, tips and hints and solutions for the problems. The problem is nobody wants to hear them. And I would always refrain from giving your suggestions or tips or hints unless you are asked for them. Now, what that, that could mean that you work in a company that has from the get-go said, we encourage proactive problem solving here. We have an open door policy. We want to hear feedback. And you see signs of that. You see visual cues. You know, you see signs that they are open and want to hear what you have to say. Because what tends to happen most of the time is people who want others to listen to them and, you know, they have a solution. You could very well have a solution. However, until someone asks for it, it's not going to be well received and it will backfire on you and get you the opposite effect. You know, it's just like we all have experienced that at some time or another. You know, like I sometimes tell my mother, you know, mom, let, stop, let, let me do it. Now, I know that work and, you know, uh, personal life is different, but I want to make my own mistakes sometimes. I want to do it this way and I, it might not have worked a hundred times in the past, but when we do it today, the 101st time, it's going to revolutionize the industry. Like there was some, some, uh, story about General Motors where that's, or GE, one or the other, where they kept doing something over and over and over again. I think it was GE, maybe the light bulb, I don't know. And they were like, you've done that. We've tried that a hundred times. And whoever it was said, well, we're going to try it 101st time. And it revolutionized the industry when it never had worked before. So I would always hold your comments and your ideas and really place them someplace. You know, spend your time thinking about things and trying to help people who have asked you for help because they will be the best, uh, the best, that, that will be the best, <laughs> the best use of your time, the best investment of your time by far than trying to force somebody to listen to your ideas or convince them when they were not asking for it to begin with. Uh, they say true no one likes to be told they are wrong, best to best to learn from mistakes even if they are not your own. I agree that very wise people learn from mistakes even if they are not your own. That is why I would say learn from the mistakes of others. Nobody likes a know-it-all. You know, nobody, you know, people will tell you if you are somebody who says, but really, I sh these people need to know. Don't you think people should know? Or no. And I'm going to guess that if you go around giving your opinion when it's not solicited, you've had many people tell you, hey, keep your trap shut until somebody asks you for your, you learn from the mistakes of other people who have been fired because they're always saying, I have a solution, I have an idea, why doesn't anybody listen to me? And I'm not saying that's anybody here on this call, but people who bring up these issues to me and tell me, you know, Dan, I've got, you know, my boss keeps making these mistakes. Why are you so focused on your boss? Imagine, imagine if one of your employees or somebody beneath you or a customer was laser focused on you and all of the mistakes you made and sat around critiquing you or criticizing you as if they were, you know, like your mom nun who was kicked out of Marquette convent, you know, when she was young and has spent her whole life trying to, you know, live the, relive the nun experience through her son, Daniel. <laughs> Let's just say, you know, something like that. Um, wouldn't that be aggravating? You know, when people after the fact say, you know, maybe next time you could try this or, you know, worse, I told you so, but no, nobody had mentioned that yet. Honestly, unless people ask you, if people were receptive to your ideas right now, if they wanted to hear them, you would be in a position to give them. That's the way it is. <laughs> That's the way life is. If you're not in that position, it's because nobody wants to hear them yet. You will have an opportunity to make the contribution that I know you want to make until that time, until you are asked to make that contribution, The way to get somebody to believe that you're intelligent is not to tell them you're intelligent. They have to discover that. 
And that's why, and that's, that's how people will think you're intelligent. If you want people to think you are compassionate, you can't tell them you're compassionate. You can't tell them that you're not racist. You can't tell them they have to discover it. You know, that you're loving, that you're inclusive, whatever it is, you can't tell people. Just like if people, you, you can't tell people that you have good ideas. You have to sit around, and that's part of the vetting process. We have to learn. We have to know when to hold them and know when to fold them. Okay, next question. Okay. Hey Dan, I feel like I want to share solutions that, that better the company because I want to see the company do good. Or how can you open people up to listening to your suggestions or solutions? Okay, we're, we're keeping on this subject. <laughs> we're another, another person asked, I want to give my company uh, suggestions yeah. on how it could do things better. The answer will never change. If you are in a company that does not want your input at all, you know, like if you're in some type of, you know, old bureaucratic, you know, company that's never changed its ways and they don't want to hear your ideas, the quickest way to get fired and to have all of your ideas get flushed down the toilet or stolen and not giving you the credit for is to start voicing them when nobody asks for them. Uh, if you work, if you do work in one of those companies, as a savvy professional with communication skills, it is up to you to change your environment and find a company that wants to hear your ideas. But the solution will always be the same. When you have a bunch of ideas that are truly good for the company, wait until it's your turn, till you've been asked, till it's appropriate, till the forum in the venue presents itself to you. Because if you try and create the forum or the venue where there is not one, it will only it will it will only come back to haunt you. There is no good way to show people all of your great ideas that you have. Now, this might if we're talking about a if we're talking about a mom and pop organization where there's five people, you know, and and you want to tell one of the five in the in the whole company you know, that you work with, hey, I've got some ideas. You can try if if you present it in a way where you know I noticed that. You would never want to be specific with a person. You know, I've noticed that uh, there's some work in the accounting department that maybe uh, I could help with. And I'd be happy to stay around and help with that if, if, if you would like me to. I noticed that there's some, you know, customer service issues that sometimes we struggle with. I'd be happy to stay after work and, or spend some extra time helping with those if you would like me to. And by the way, that is a key. And I just thought of that now. In the past, this has worked beautifully. If you are going to offer to give your ideas, you offer it to the powers that be or to the people that you think may or may not want to hear them. You offer those ideas, but you say, I would like to help. I think there are some areas that I could be of service. Could I stay extra time? Could I stay after work? Could we do some extra work in addition to what I'm getting paid for, I want to do this on a volunteer basis afterwards if you would like me to. Would you like me to? Because if they really want to hear your idea, they'll meet you after work and they will listen to it. If they don't, they won't. And if, you're, if your intention really is to help, as you say it is, then you'll be happy to do it on a volunteer basis after work. And when you show yourself and your ideas to be what you believe that they are, the natural order will be that you'll be placed in a position where they will want to hear them and they will want your input and feedback more. If that is not how it goes, you know this was not the right venue and my ideas were not the right ones for this organization. Not that they weren't valuable. They weren't the right ones for this organization. Go ahead. So what happens when you give uh, ideas and boss, bosses takes them as their own? What do you do? Okay, there's... <laughs> <laughs> I would stop being so selfish and egotistical. I've had a lot. This whole, this whole, this whole half an hour has been about, well, what about when my boss does this? What about when my boss does that? What about when my boss does this? What about you? It's not about your boss. You know, like when my boss takes my ideas and presents them as his own or her own, I would be flattered by that. And you know, that's happened it's in the course of anyone's professional career, that has happened. And when that happens, what I'm going to do is, you know, like, what do you want your boss to do? 
treat you with dignity and honor, then what we're going to do is the only way to teach somebody that lesson is what? To behave with dignity and honor. And so if my boss, I have to show them what that looks like. If my boss is stealing my idea in front of a group, what I'm going to do is encourage that boss, you know, and be there for him or her and, you know, clap my hands and pretend like that was never my idea. I'm going to support you and be an honorable person with you because that is the only shot we've got of teaching that person what honor is. I have to do that. And I shouldn't be worried all the time about, are you stealing my ideas? If I am as good as I think I am, if I am educated at the top of my game, I, I'm dedicated, if I'm all of those things, you can't help but see that. You know, you, it cannot be hidden. If I am not those things, I can't fake it. So what are we worried about? I'm not worried about what my boss is doing. I have to stop worrying about my boss, my coworkers. I, we worry way too much about other people. I'm just going to worry about me and my, my own development. And in doing so, I will have the greatest effect on those around me because I will be showing them the way that I wish they would behave. Okay, what about dealing with people who bad, bad mouth the boss who are honestly not doing the, the best job? but you don't want to join in and want to actually stick up for them without sounding contradictory. Oh, that's a good question. What if somebody's bad-mouthing the boss or bad-mouthing other people at work and you want to say something, but, but you feel uncomfortable doing so? You don't want to seem contradictory. Also, you know, you, that's a cost-benefit analysis thing. Many times I have chosen just to remain silent when I'm listening to other people talk about others because I want to hear what you have to say. I, if I speak up, regardless of the effect it may or may not have, I now know that I will be hearing less of the information and it will be more, it will be less candid because I will be now seen as somebody who's not, you know, in the circle. So you have to do that cost benefit analysis in speaking up. I will be less in the loop than I am right now. Is that good or not? Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. Having said that, if I want to, you know, if I want to say, hey, I don't dig that type of talk. Again, we want to have visual cues around in a, in a professional environment to remind one another what professional communication truly is. Now, if this is, you know, if this is in the lunchroom, if this is off, you know, if I'm in a restaurant and I hear my coworkers, that's this is personal time. But if we're at work and you are criticizing somebody negatively without them in the room, that is just idle gossip. And it's not a difficult thing to address. The difficult part is making the decision to do it, right? And to be that person that says, excuse me, Josh, I believe that if you're going to be talking about Mary, Mary should be present in this conversation. Would you like to go get her or shall I? And when you give people that type of closing line, would you like to get her or shall I? You will be seen as the biggest wet noodle, party pooper, you know, you know what I mean? People will be wah, wah, wah. But they will stop talking about that person. The trick is consistency and you have to actually say it. You know, like, John, you, there are many different ways to say it. You know, I could say, John... I hope you don't talk about me when I'm not in the room like this. And I thought, according to that thing we have on the wall again, diversity, confidence, whatever, that we all agreed not to do that. You could give somebody a gentle reminder like that. You know, I, I believe, John, that you're not in line with our diversity compass. Wouldn't you agree? Saying whatever you need to say, simple. It's making the decision to say it. And if they keep it up, Remember this, if they keep it up, they keep bad-mouthing other people, whatever it is, staying put after you have voiced your uh, opinion, you know, after, after you've said, I'm not cool with this, if you stay put, you are contrite, right? Is that the right word? Yes. Contrition? No. <laughs> You're, you are, uh, that's not the right word. You are... Uh, Contradicting? Nope. You are... The people who are onlookers to a crime. You know what I'm talking about. Well, the, well, you're you're guilty by... Oh, I can't remember the word. Somebody out there knows the word. It's on the tip of my tongue. But 
simply being there and allowing it to go on after I have said I'm not cool with that is the wrong thing to do. And when you get up and leave a room, that speaks volumes. So if you are in a really uncomfortable situation and you just don't have the words or you think, God, if I say something, they might kick my ass. You know what I mean? If you're at school, get up and just leave. If people know that when they start that type of behavior, you always silently get up and leave like my dad does every time we start talking about you know bodily functions at the dinner table. Guilty by association. Nope, you are. Okay. There's a there's a word for it though. The, uh, it's a bit of my tongue. A lot of people in politics these days are going to be guilty. You are just as guilty if you witness the crime and do nothing, as you would be if you actually committed the crime, because you are guilty by complicity. <laughs> Not guilty. I can't. Is it that is the com, com, you're complicit? That is it. You are complicit. Uh, right. Yeah. And when you are complicit. Like, that's, that's almost more hurtful than the ones who do it. You know, big mouths who go around, you know, saying outrageous things, they can be hurtful. But if you've been the target of bullying, whether it's workplace bullying or school bullying, it's when you look at the other people who are sitting idly by, saying nothing. Those are the people who you remember 30 years later. And you, you think, you sat by while I was being stoned. You know, while, while I was being crucified, while I was being judged, while I was being bullied while I was being, you know, while I was being treated with such lovelessness, you didn't think that was worth doing anything. That person was just an insane moment, you know, maybe. They were having, a, we're maybe friends now. I now know you. You sit by when you know something is wrong and do nothing. That's worse, <laughs> you know? The person who was piping off at the mouth might have thought that they were doing the right thing at the time. So get up and leave. That's a huge deal. And if, as you're leaving, you feel like saying, I don't engage in this type of thing. Say that. But just be prepared to pay the consequences. Now, I, I know it's really late. What time is it? It's uh, 5 till 3. It's 5 to 3. I'm going to say this. In Mexico. Uh, well, we're in Mexico. If you have... Uh, what time is it? If you if you want access to all of our live webinars, this is, this is just free YouTube, unless you're a member. Do we have any members on right now? No, we don't. Okay. If you want access to all of our webinars and courses and lives, you know, online stuff, the VIP membership, if you send Jean a, uh, an email and ask her for a 50% off coupon for the VIP membership, she will give you one if you do it today. So I would recommend that really because it's only a few hundred bucks if you do it that way and it gives you every single product we ever have from now till eternity. And you can join any course, take it at your leisure for more stuff like this because it is time for me to shut my big trap and it's time to go. But hold on a second. We got to get Maggie in and the Maggie just got a bath. Uh, and so she's feeling kind of sassy. Hey, Megs, Maggie. I know people want to see Maggie and Buddy. Hey, Buddy. Maggie, Buddy. Buddy, Buddy, Buddy. Okay. All of the dogs are kind of down, you know, since Hunter left. Hey, baby. There's, there we go. There's Hunter. There's not Hunter. There's Buddy. There's Buddy and Megs. Uh, I wanted to show you something, speaking of diversity and people who think that their boss might not be doing it the right way. Um, do we have, like, a, could you do me a huge favor and grab a couple of crackers from sure. the kitchen? Okay. We tend to, those of us who are saying, hey, I don't want my boss, or I, I don't, I, I need to tell my boss what they're doing wrong. Remember that there's many different ways <laughs> to get to the goal, right? There are many different ways to get to the end goal. And many times when we see other people on the way, we think, where are you going? You are way off track. What is wrong with you? But we don't know. You know, we just, there, there are different ways of doing things, right? Like Maggie and Buddy have very different ways of catching the treat. Uh, every... So watch this. Buddy. He's very high-spirited and lunges at the treat with all of his might. Will you do it? Will you give him the treats? Sure. Now, Maggie, on the other hand, not yet. Buddy will throw himself, throw caution to the wind. Maggie, wait, wait, wait. Maggie will sit like a lady with her fingers, with her hands planted, and wait for the treat to come to her, and without Same. moving her feet, she'll grab it. Watch. Okay, so first, Buddy. Oh, see, did you see? He lunged, lunged. Caution to the wind. Now watch Maggie. <laughs> Without moving her 
her pretty little paws. What? Oh, well, she didn't grab it that time. Way to go, Mags. <laughs> Come on, girlie. See, did you see that? So they both have very different ways of getting the treat. They both got the treat. And they're both enjoying the treat. They wouldn't necessarily do it the way I would do it. But they both get the job done. So we have to let other people do things the way they want to do it. And realize that we all have different ways of getting there. But we are all going to the same place in the end. And remember, uh, if... Yes. They ask how... Do we message Gene for the fifty percent? I apologize. Send Gene an email at gene at danoconnertraining dot com. Go to danoconnertraining dot com. The links should be in the description below. And Gene is J E A N. Gene at danoconnertraining dot com. Uh, I'll tell her to stand by. <laughs> You're welcome, Jean. And uh, if you ask her for a 50% off coupon, she will give you one. Uh, that's only good for, a th I don't know what she does. It's usually good for a day or two. Um, and hey, if you have not yet subscribed to this channel, please do so and share these videos with your friends. And the people that you think could use a little bit of help, share these videos with them. You know, they're free and, and become a member. Become a member either here or at Dan O'Connor Training. We would love you to join us in our fight to help really shine light into the darkness and change the global dialogue one conversation at a time. So for everybody here at Dan O'Connor Training, this is Dan O'Connor. And we've got Buddy and Maggie. Oh, look at Maggie. She is just so sweet. And Buddy is such a good boy. He's such a good boy. He's such an attention hog. Signing off. Bye-bye. Say goodbye, Andrew. Bye-bye.